another episode of Bible Study from the Garage. You know what we're going to talk about today? Oh, I'm so excited about what we're going to talk about. It's the cat episode. It's the cat episode. Cats? You know, no. Scott told me that if we had a cat no, episode, you know. it would go viral. He told me cats. that if we did cats, cats will break the internet. Why is the internet invented? For cats. Cats. It, you know, it wasn't created for Bible study from the garage. Cats. You know, we're just utilizing the internet for cats. that. But, you, you know, let, let's show these people, you know, some happy images. There you go. Gosh, that's a good image. <laughs> that is a great image. I hope you can just zoom in on that a little bit and enjoy the beauty of Jesus holding. Do you think Jesus had a pet cat? I don't, I don't even know. Do you think he had pets? Okay, well, well I, I mean, in America, you got to have a pet. My, uh, I, I'm just still in shock. My sister got dogs. Really? She she's a cat person. She, well, no, she's not a cat person, but she's not a pet person. And so, <laughs> but you know, she got dogs. She got two of them. Dog. Dogs are kidney oh, work animals. Oh, man. No, these are these Cats are, are not work animals. animals. Cats are trying to figure out a way to eat you. Cats are not work <laughs> animals. But it's the cat episode. We're really excited, and we're going to talk a little bit about... Cats in the Bible. Do you know that there isn't one reference to cats in the Bible? Well, you not even one. It doesn't talk about cats except lions and tigers and bears on mine. Now you're on to it. We <laughs> might have a workaround here. We had to work really hard. I mean, I, we had to really put our minds together. But what else do we got to put on the screen? No, These cats are that, from France. That, that, that is not the cats we're talking about. These cats are from France. That is terrible. But that is why the internet was created. You, you gotta, you, you gotta get off something else because that is terrible. Cats. Oh, Woo! cats love Jesus. This cat <laughs> loved them some Jesus. I think you can find some amazing things on the internet. You would never think about that, but somebody with too much time on their hands, they created that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What else do we that. got? Oh, this is the, the meme of the lifetime goodness. right here. That is. I didn't knock your sin just once. Nine times. <laughs> so we're glad to welcome you because we have found the workaround. There is one reference, and it even is in, in reference to, to Jesus, the guy we like. Sure. You know, he's thinking, well, at least sure. the guy, I don't want to speak for you, but the guy the guy who I like, who who, who, who is? Everybody loves the lion. You know, the lion of Judah right there. The and we got the, you know, the lion of Judah. And it's one of those titles that over and over again, Christians like. I mean, you put it on t-shirts, you put it in, you know, different things on your wall. This image of Jesus as the lion. But, so, well, it's, I mean, the lion's first mentioned in, in Genesis, but not, but not in reference to Jesus. Yeah, not in but reference to Jesus. But in the lion of his yeah. family. Yeah. Well, uh, Judah. Judah. You know, so uh, Israel is giving blessings to his kids. You know, Jacob is giving blessings to uh, his children. And he gets to this guy, uh, his kid, Judah, and he gives him a blessing. And he refers to him as, you know, the whelp, whatever that is. You're going to have to learn what a whelp is. Well, so, that's, uh... Uh, uh, well maybe we can, we can, you know, Google that a little bit and be more prepared next time. But, you know, this oh, time... Well, uh, Walt Whitman yeah. let off a good whelp. Well, that's it. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but a, a whelp is what you know—a little, a little cub. So yeah. this idea of he, you know, his son isn't a mighty lion, but his son's a little cub. Yeah, it was a little. Was the tribe of Judah then gets connected ever since then okay. with the lion of Judah. It, it maybe is their you know coat of arms or you know their well, spirit Jesus animal. Is a symbol. Jesus is a symbol for the it family. It becomes a title. It becomes a title. Yeah. Oh, I got a meme challenge. Ready? If Jesus was in Top Gun, what would be his call oh, sign? Oh my gosh, that is something to ponder. <laughs> call sign Line of Judah. <laughs> Line of Judah. I like it. I, I think that's kind of the way oh it works because call signs, nicknames, yeah. these titles that we sure. have. You know, we don't really have titles too much. We have nicknames. We have nicknames. And but Jesus, a call sign is kind of know, a nickname. But this Although, idea, you know, how you your know. handle. I you, mean, that's the way it's it's known. You know how you know there's a pilot at your party. Don't worry, he'll tell you. <laughs> You're saying there's a little bit of ego? Joke. You're saying there's a little bit of ego. Yeah, one guy who was in the, he was a Navy pilot, he told me, yeah, if anybody says they have a cool uh, call sign, they're lying because you don't get to choose yours. Somebody else chooses your call sign. And so he said, usually your friends don't, they don't name you. He said, not usually. He said, they never name you. So they're a cool. I, I will tell this story. Yeah. Um, my graduate advisor, great man, uh, major general in the U.S. Marine Corps, call sign Digger. And I said, hey, what's your, uh, what's your call sign mean? He goes, I will never tell you. <laughs> and I said, why not? 
He goes, because you know my wife. And it might come out. <laughs> <laughs> so they all have hidden meetings. Oh, I they all have hidden meetings. You know my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but Lion of Judah is this wonderful title we get for Jesus. But it, it's not the animal that uh, Jesus is most no. associated with. What's the animal Jesus is most associated with? A lamb. It is. Not even a full grown in the you know, Bible, even, a, ram. Could, a ram could be okay. I'd be like, you know, the, the Los Angeles Rams. That'd be okay. But it's not Rams. It's lamb. It's the Los Angeles Lambs. Oh, my God. But if it's L, if it's that Lamb is... with a capital L, we know who we're talking about. It is the Lamb. The Lamb. In, in fact, when uh, John the Baptist introduces Jesus at the beginning of the Gospel of John, he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That the Lamb is what Jesus is referred to as over and over again. Even in the book of Revelation, where this title, the Lion of Judah, then comes in. The only other place where Lion of Judah is uttered is uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. Yeah, so let's, uh, let me read uh, just a portion of that. It says, Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Clearly yeah. a reference to Jesus. Well, we like that lions are conquering. Sure. You know, and so Jesus is a man from the tribe of Judah. So this is a title used to say, you know, who is Jesus? It's got two parts to it, Lion and Judah. So of Judah means he belongs to that family line sure. that goes all the way back to Judah. But this image of Lion, what, what do you think that one? Why, why do you think they give him, give him that title? Well, I think people are, you know, they look at him as a warrior, a tough guy, you it's, know, it's, somebody who's, hmm. you know, they're trying to attribute some symbolism to him and, we do it in literature as well. I mean, there's the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. There are other... I was thinking of Richard the Lionheart. Richard the Lionheart. Yeah, but that's a title that we would say, you know, there's a metaphor or a phrase, whether there's something courageous in that person or strong sure. or mighty. So it wasn't that Jesus had whiskers, was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Jesus is using... The he story. did have a beard. <laughs> he did have Wait, a... how do you know that? What was in the picture we showed? <laughs> you don't think Jesus had a beard? You know what you need to do to grow a beard if you're a man? You know what you need to do? Get older. Nothing. There's nothing <laughs> you need to do in order to you know shave, in order to not have a beard. So God wanted men to have beards. So that's, my that's why scene. Jesus had That's my favorite beard. scene in Caddyshack. What's that? He goes, well, hey, Ty, uh, what'd you shoot today? He goes, oh, I don't keep score. He goes, well, how do you measure yourself against other golfers? He goes, by height. <laughs> You know, I measure other other people because I'm not six foot three or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By how much hair they can grow on their face. Oh, it is a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah it. it is. Can't grow well, hair. I'm a little you know, suspect. It was <laughs> in in ancient Greece. You were you were a boy, and then you know when you became a man. When you had to shave the first time. That's it. When you had a beard. That yeah. when you could grow a beard, so you better grow a beard as fast as All you I can. <laughs> I love that. I mean, Spartacus, right? Like, uh, Some guys uh, are men early than others. Spartacus always shaved his face. Yeah, always shaved his face. Yeah, yeah, shaved I his don't face. think so. Yeah. <laughs> but today, as we think about, you know, this title of Jesus, this image of Jesus, maybe, you know, all shenanigans aside, we could say, is there a reason in the book of Revelation this title is used? Because it's it's he has to conquer. He has to be worthy of... Uh, and be the one who is mighty enough, be the one who's strong enough. And, and that's one of the things often we think about. Is Jesus, you know, uh, like we sing about at Christmas, you know, gentle, you know, Jesus, you know, he's just a little baby. And well, very that's the human mild. side. That's the human yeah. side. We celebrate human Jesus at Christmas. And, uh, well, baby Jesus. Baby you know, Jesus. Not, not yeah. mighty you warrior Jesus. Jesus. And, but we often think of Jesus as the Prince of Peace. We often think of Jesus as not a fighter, but the one who lays his life down. And, and this is one of those interesting things that, that does Jesus defeat things? Is he a warrior? There is, you know, some theologians who have tried to play with that and say Jesus is a warrior. He defeats, you know, sin, death, and the power of the devil. That Jesus goes to battle um, in this world, but he fights in a way that's different than the rules of engagement in this world. He fights not through f force, not through might, not through domination of will. He he is, uh, you know, in some way he's an artist because he likes to flip things around. Yeah. 
right? He, he he's kind of George Costanza. He does opposite day all the time, right? <laughs> But he throws these uh, contradictory images and contradictory yeah. words, and you know he eats with the tax collectors. He uh, says things about the meek that are about God is giving them a gift, and there yeah. are other elements where he actually gets angry and overturns tables and does things to make a point. But he's always speaking in some sort of par- parable. He's not telling you directly yeah. he's making you learn and this opportunity uh to continually grow is there because do you ever feel like you've got a grasp on the whole thing that's a great point that even the language of religion or of faith is symbolic which means it operates on a bunch of different levels all at the same, same time. time and and that it operates you know one of my friends likes to say uh, you know, a symbol is where another world shines through. You know, where we see what it means here, but we also see what's more in that title or in that message. You know, even saying Jesus is the Lamb of God. And Jesus is the Lion of Judah. You know, what does that say for us? Number one, I think what it spoke to the ancient people was we got a king back. You know, um, this idea that, uh, that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the anointed one. He, he is, in Greek, the word is Christ. That means he is the one who is God's anointed, the chosen one, the king, to lead, gather, and uh, protect God's people. But, you know, as we think about that, if for our faith today, what should we be? Should we be lions or lambs? What do you think? And that's even, I see I some, think we I see some be... t-shirts that often say, lions, not lambs. Usually it's yeah. Navy guys or Marines <laughs> who are really, uh, yeah, usually they're pretty ripped I and pretty you tough. Should, yeah. uh, rather than try to emulate the symbology, just try to be like Jesus. Mm. With all the ambiguity and the uncertainty, the beautiful gift that's been given to us is that we can simultaneously in our head see Jesus as a lamb and also as a lion okay. and have discourse and talk about it, which elevates our spirituality, which gives us a opportunity to speak to God. Well, I think you're onto something, but I had one guy once we were talking about this, he was another pastor and he said, you know, tell me about your Jesus. Popcorn Jesus. Tell me about we your do Jesus. An on popcorn uh, well, we Jesus. should, but, Jesus. But, but tell me about him. Who, who, you said emulate Jesus, but who is Jesus to you? What is he the lion or the lamb? I think he is both, but at different moments, based on different values or circumstances, he's there. I mean, it's easy to say he's a lion in this situation and he's a lamb in this situation. But what if you're faced with a choice that's morally ambiguous and no matter what choice you make, there's going to be a moral consequence, yeah. and you have to live with it. Then what is Jesus? Is he a lion or a lamb, or is he just there because he loves you? Well, I think, you know, for me, it's a great point. But for me, I, I think those two uh, symbols or those two animals, you know, I, I don't know if this is right. We, we should have had a, another, you know, we had a sheep episode. We we have cheap you know, now we got the cat. Of them, we should have had a cat expert who could tell us <laughs> what lions really are. But this idea of a lion as a taker and a sheep as a giver, this idea of a servant versus you know one who comes to rule, because you know who's the king of the jungle? Well, George. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but as we think about this, you know, is Jesus the top of the heap or is he the servant of all? And this is one of those interesting things where I think today many Christians feel like we shouldn't get taken advantage of. We should, you know, not be a doormat. We need to be strong Christians. And and there is this big push. I even have a friend who calls it macho Christianity. <laughs> it's a little, little macho. Well, I think that... Muscular is another word for it. Muscular healthy, Christianity. Healthy. Ooh, healthy. Oh, might like be that. a word I would use. I, I think... You know, you're supposed to love your enemies, but it doesn't mean that, you know, you should be a doormat, right? It I, means I like that you that. need to do that with healthy boundaries. You can help people that want to be helped, right? And so not only do you have to set healthy boundaries, you have to respect other people's boundaries 
and sometimes even when it's not in their best interest. Oh, I like that. That's this is what's hard about life. Yeah. And this is what you have. You you know you have a a lifetime partner, somebody who can provide you some inspiration on how to deal with various issues. I like that. So in that yeah. case, the inspiration is maybe the lion, but the lamb is who you should aspire to be. Yeah. Right. The lamb. Right. In here. In mm-hmm. here. Right. In your thoughts, words, and actions. It's not just about being kind. I mean, I see a lot of people that talk a good game about compassion, but don't actually live it. And then I see a lot of people that uh, are so compassionate, they don't realize how much damage they're doing. Yeah. And I think the balance and the healthy is what you should try to sort through. And so when we get this image of a lion and a lamb, they're they're sort of opposed to each other because one's <laughs> going to eat the other, right? Yeah. Not, the, not the other way around. And so what does that mean? If you have great power, you can choose not to act. Is that one of the lessons that we learn from the image of the lamb? Or is it that we are going to be meek and emulate the lamb until we can't anymore? Mm-hmm. So we have strength. You know, maybe it's the, uh, you know, speak softly and carry a big stick kind of thing, right? I don't know if we should be. The Prince of Peace doesn't want us with a stick. I I'm don't just, think you I don't us. know. I don't know. Well, a stick is probably better than a sword or a gun or a bomb. <laughs> sure. I think some of those. But, you know, for me, that's even the question I, I like. Is it ever okay for Christians to be aggressive? Is it okay for Christians to dominate? Or are we always... And, and I think we're looking for absolutes, and we're looking for either ors. And what I liked in what you were saying is there's some nuance in it. And and once we try to just take one image and apply it to everything, that doesn't work. Breaks down. The image should really be used. You know what? What is the revelation or the revelation? <laughs> revelation trying to teach us. What is revelation trying to make known and reveal? about uh, what's happening here. And and in this context, I know Scott's really big on not reading things out of context. I'm, I'm usually a little more okay. You know, I, you know, when I use it that way, it's right. Uh, but he, he wants to be a little bit more you know, faithful and say, well, what's the context? What What is the surrounding things? And we can't just pull it out and, and use it whenever we want because uh, it serves our argument. It, it really is there for a specific, you know, message. And, Be like and Simba, think, not like Scott. Oh, <laughs> man, I like this. Lion King. Not Lion to Judah, Lion King. You know, it's, is, the Lion King is Simba. almost, this Bambi is almost the exact same story. So he, they reuse the story. Dead, dead parents. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody oh, hates us. Oh, <laughs> Disney. Well, uh, you cartoons. Know, so they're, they're often violent. So take things. I read yeah. a, 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 yeah. a portion of Revelation. But right after, they speak about the slaughtered lamb. So they do make direct reference to him. And the power, was he a lamb that acted like a lion when he was up on the cross? Hmm. So I, you, And we move in between the humanity of it and, his, and the, the yeah. you know, spiritual side of it at the same time. It, all symbols can get overworked, overused, oh, uh, uh, manipulated, used for poor purposes. But... To start a conversation and have some discourse yeah. about who Jesus was and what it means to follow him and and how you should act in particular situations is part of what you know. And the I, religious end of it is. I, I is love that you're there. I know one of the things you know maybe to bring in too is you know the militaristic you know Christianity even some of our songs. Sure. You know, nobody <laughs> wants to sing onward Christian soldiers anymore. Or thinking about other religions that try to spread themselves through, violence. you know, violence and domination. That that uh, today we maybe can say, "Oh, Lion of Judah," that is his title, you know. But but what does that mean? And and it is a title trying to help us understand the significance that Jesus comes from a certain earthly family, and you know that regal image sure. of the king, that regal image of Jesus as you know, the mighty king of the jungle. And, uh, you know, today I'm grateful that we could talk a little bit. The cat episode. <laughs> what a great, you know. You know, what I, I, I just think, you know, it's some good stuff on the screen today. I mean, he really bloodhounded some uh, really wonderful, <laughs> probably 
didn't even know those uh, images were out there of Jesus and cats. <laughs> People love cats. They did. They you know what we cats. didn't do today, though? We didn't pray. We didn't pray. So let's say a quick word of prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of today, for this time together, for this chance to think about how, uh, how you work in this world and how you would have us live. Help us to love all creatures, even cats, uh, as you love this world that you've made. And help us to know what it means that you come into this world as both lion and lamb. Help us to be your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. God bless everybody.